Yeah, guten Tag. Ich darf Sie ganz Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the press conference after the Berlin Agricultural Ministers' Conference in the scope of the GFFA. Due to COVID-19, it had to happen only virtually, and right at my side is the host, Federal Minister Julia Klöckner. And we are joined virtually by Dr. Ju Dongyu, General Director of FAO, as well as the Executive Secretary by the UNF. CCCC, Patricia Espinosa, as well as Janusz Wojcikowski, the mission commissioner of the European Commission for Agriculture and Rural Development. And welcome to all of you as well who are with us today virtually. Two things in advance. This press conference is being translated into English and German. You can choose the language you would like to listen to via Zoom and we will listen to our speakers today in the order that I just mentioned and then we'll have time for questions. Minister, thank you Mr. Powell, welcome Mr. Ju, welcome Mrs. Espinoska and welcome Mr. Wojcikowski, ladies and gentlemen who are joining us online. Thank you. Thank you for your interest in this press conference. The Global Forum for Food and Agriculture is indeed a unique forum. It has become more clearly than ever before this year, especially in times of global pandemics. It is important that we stay in touch. Many events were cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And it is key that we don't lose sight of each other. The world came together for this forum to help each other. Food security was one topic. We also addressed questions of food security in times of pandemics and climate change. We all do that at the national level with national measures, but we also must close ranks internationally. That is why I'm all the more delighted that many of my colleagues followed our invitation we actually reached a record number of more than 80 agricultural ministers from all over the world. 90 countries were represented, 13 international bodies at the highest level joined us. That clearly shows this is a very topical issue, the issue, the topic of this year's GFFA, which was how to feed the world in times of pandemics and climate change. It clearly shows one thing. It is of utmost importance that we find solutions because the COVID-19 pandemic has clearly showed to us that all of our health is quite vulnerable and also that resilient food systems and strong supply chains are key. Let me just mention one quite drastic example to illustrate this. In 40 countries, the reality is as follows. These countries do not have sufficient agricultural land to even feed their own population, their own people, and they are forced to import products. And COVID-19 is, of course, adding to this struggle against hunger. Let me give you some specific figures that also show how severe the situation is. According to international estimates, the number of people suffering from hunger could grow by another 130 million people or has already risen to that. So on top of these 690 million people who already didn't have enough food on their plates before the pandemic. So we discussed solutions because this is a dramatic issue and indescribable suffering. We can't just sit idly by. We can't wait for another pandemic to come around. No, we talked about how we can actively fight the impacts of the pandemic, how we can prepare better for the future. We also need to assess the root causes of such pandemics. It is a clear signal of strong unity that we agreed on a common communique together. This communique is probably available to you and will be made available to you and it is rich in its contents. The negotiations were very long and 
Of course, the wording was discussed. Let me just mention three key aspects that I consider relevant. First of all, a clear demand. We need open markets, we need access to food, and we need stable supply chains, locally and internationally. Borders were closed and travel restrictions were issued, especially in Africa and Asia. Many people lost their jobs due to that and, of course, also their income. This exacerbates hunger. Functioning supply chains are a prerequisite for food on the plates of the people and also for stable and affordable prices. Just take a look at a family. Maybe small children, babies, adolescents. We all are aware nutrition and food and good as well as balanced and appropriate nutrition is key in this stage of their life for their further development. If that is not guaranteed, then, well, the situation may easily turn quite dramatic. So, yes, supply chains on the local level are key. We often don't have the necess necessary, necessary infrastructure in terms of transport and storage, so half of the foodstuffs is lost along the production chain in many regions of the world. And on the other hand, we are wasting a lot of food. The impact is dramatic. Some people are starving and others are throwing away food. A second aspect, in terms of agriculture, we need to reconcile climate change stewardship and food security. We need to enable farmers to act. We need to feel that in all of our statements. That is why it is a pleasure and honor that the Secretary General of the United Nations spoke to us, Mr. Guterres, or the young farmers who joined us. They issued their own statement, a common statement of international young farmers and handed it as to us. We need sustainable agriculture as a key to feeding the world and to fight climate change, especially because agriculture is often a victim of climate change, but can also help to mitigating climate change. Of course, this means responsibility. Agriculture needs to be enabled to face up to climate change, to withstand it. And Agriculture needs to be able to live up to the expectations and requirements that are, well, easily put out there. On its own, agriculture will not be able to fight climate change. How do we do, how do we make this a success? We address this as well. We need climate resilient and locally adapted crops. We need to use and develop them. We also need to make sure that we do not cut down forests any longer. Afforestation is important and climate adapted forestry. We need to cut down on fertilizers and crop protection agents. We need to use technology. We need to seize the opportunity of soil to bind carbon, strengthen their role as a carbon sink. So now let me come to the last aspect, One Health. The One Health approach needs to be strengthened to reduce the risk of zoonoses. One Health, what does that imply? It implies that we don't distinguish between health protection in terms of animals, humans or the environment. We need a comprehensive approach. Zoonoses have been mentioned. COVID-19 is not the first virus that was transmitted from animals to humans. 70% of all pathogens of infectious diseases over the last 30 years in humans are, have been of animal origin. Animal health is therefore critical for animals themselves, but also for human health and humans. And for COVID-19, we currently believe that this close contact between wildlife and humans has led to the transmission there are other examples of zoonoses, rabies or Ebola. These diseases cost many millions, thousands of people's their lives. 
So animal health is a prerequisite for human health. In order to prevent future pandemics, we want to analyze root causes. We want to have functioning early warning systems to implement them and also to have better health management for wildlife. That's what we agreed upon. So let me conclude by saying where we are heading. This question will probably come from you as the journalists. The communique will also be one of our contributions to the UN Food Systems Summit this year in September 2021. I handed it over to the special envoy to the UN Food Systems Summit, Dr. Agnes Kalibata, as well as the Secretary General of OIE, Dr. Monique Eloy, as well as the Executive Secretary of UNFCCC, Patricia Espinosa. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Dr. Ju, you have the floor. First of all, uh I, I would like to congratulate to uh, my friend, uh, Junior Minister uh, Klockner. You know, you are doing right things at the right time. You know, when you start uh, initiate that the uh, collaboration between FAO and, uh, and the Germany Minister of uh, Agriculture and Food, we designed this year's uh, theme and it's come to the three categories you present. I think that time it was uh, September or October. So it's still, it's not uh, like now. So since uh, early this year, I participated in the One House uh, Approach Summit, One Planet Summit, and now come my third, it's uh, GFAFA. So GFAFA, you know, it's a long history, uh, impact uh, uh, kickoff meeting every year after New Year. So I, I really uh, sincerely congratulate your efforts, especially during this pandemic. People, if you are accountable, responsible, you needed to do something. And for the people, for the global. That's, I think, uh, the FAO always stand uh, in lines with you, with the Germany government. Last time I, I saluted to the uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel also for her leadership. Uh, and together with uh, uh, President Macron and FAO and also WHO. That's why we, uh, myself, put a lot of efforts on the uh, One Health approach. We established global leadership on the AMR and the One Health. That was already had the first meeting in early November last year. So we will have more uh, high-level uh, meetings to get the one house approach. It should be understandable and build more consensus and among the members of this uh, planet. Second, as an FAO, we have to specify how to transform agri-food system. You know, during the pandemic, luckily, we have prevented the food crisis so far due to the international agro trade is functioning quite well. Even if we face the uh, big challenge and also the some lot of disruption of the trade and the supply chains and the transportation and even labor forces in Europe and in some other parts of the world also. But I would, I'm happy to see that due to the, uh, all the efforts of the Minister of Agriculture and Food and the, and the farmers, the producers, the dealers, at least we, did, we didn't see that big uh, catastrophe disaster for the uh, uh, human being. But at the same time, we've, we saw the fragility of agri-food systems from the environment to the production to the processing, to the marketing channel, as well as the uh, uh, also most variables are affected by uh, severe, you see. That's why we want to build the international uh, uh, consensus to have the uh, variable first. So agro-food transformation should be feed the different members because different members have a different agro-food system. And 
we want to keep the international trade functional in fact first and then we encourage a local producer more and then of course we encourage the producer more and better and also with less impact less input uh, and others the solution if we are encouraging is to have a more innovation that's also last time i I enjoyed the meeting with the Bioeconomy Summit with the uh, uh, Minister uh, Julian, because I think also uh, Germany government also one of the key players on that area. We need the more high technology for agricultural seeds, chemicals, fertilizers, vaccines, animal vaccines, and other inputs. So the solution uh, for agro food transformation to to build also one health approach to prevent another pandemic, we need the innovation. Innovation on policy, innovation on the uh, technology, innovation on the business model. That's why I, I salute also organizers of this GFAFA to put this on the stage. And in combined with the one approach, one uh, uh, health approach as a holistic design, and last but not least, FAO, we're willing to encourage all the members to have a more political engagement. Because agriculture and food is a fundamental. And the food is a basic human rights. As uh, UN Secretary General just mentioned this afternoon, I always uh, say that also publicly, food, without the food, without the basic rights as a human being, because we are now in the modern civilization. We should have a, all the tools to end the hunger. Unless we have a strong political willingness and a more investment in agriculture, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the agriculture and the rural areas. I said also we need also the international cooperation because developed nations can offer more and also the developing nations can learn more and also at the same time, so we can also South South cooperation, developing country, learning from developing country. So that's why the FAO we are encouraging triangle cooperation. I expect that all the members, especially from my Germany government, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Economy, and others, have strengthened collaboration through FAO. That's why I come to the hand in hand initiative, because we want to bring the matchmaking relationship between uh, FAO and the members, from the donor members to the recipient members. And also, as you point out also, agriculture is suffering from the industrial revolution during the past 200 years. And also, if we are managed very well, properly, agriculture is, will, will be buffer for the sustainable development and the environment uh, uh, improvement. And the last, not the least, I think finally, agriculture systems will become, play the role in the uh, contributor. So from this suffering to the buffer, and finally will be the last uh, uh, contributor. And to keep the inclusive, sustainable, green development. And that's is real end goal and we can end that. Zero, we end the hang, hunger, left no one behind, and also we can offer them high nutritional food diets for the people who wish to. And agriculture food transformation is not a one day, one year's uh, uh, job. We need the persistent and the close cooperation globally, holistically, and also collectively. I thank you uh, uh, of the chance uh, again for the FAO to cooperation. And uh, we committed to strengthen collaborations with you and with other partners, multilateral partners, bilateral partners, and the civil societies. So I want to build the FAO to be the accountable and uh, innovative uh, uh, organization, dynamic for the better world. Uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director General. And with this, I would like to hand over to Ms. Espinosa, Executive Secretary of UNFCCC.
Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Klöckner. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for organizing this very important event. It has been uh, really uh, amazing to see the dedication of all the ministers. Uh, I'm very, very happy to receive the communicate and to note the dedication by all uh, your colleagues, the agriculture ministers from all around the world that we're meeting today virtually to act on hunger, on climate change, on food production, forestry, and so many other vital issues. I would like to just uh, make a few comments uh, about why all of this is so important in 2021. Last week, the European Union's Climate Change Service reported that 2020 tied 2016 as the world's warmest year on record. And the UNEP gap re emissions gap report tells us that based on current pledges under the, under the Paris Agreement, the world is headed for a three degree rise in temperature. This is a far cry from Paris's 1.5 uh, goal. That's why we must work with renewed efforts to complete all outstanding work under the Paris Agreement, implement it as soon as possible, and significantly boost climate ambition under it. So while drastically reducing fossil fuel emissions is crucial to addressing climate change and enabling agricultural activities in the future, there is no debate that the agriculture sector can also contribute to emissions reductions. And it was really heartening to see the uh, commitment by ministers to contribute in this regard. The IPCC notes that roughly a quarter of man-made greenhouse gas emissions come from land use, especially from deforestation and agriculture. In order to reduce these emissions without jeopardizing global food supplies, as you have very clearly expla explained, we must find climate-friendly and economically viable solutions for food production systems around the globe. It's clear that we cannot achieve success on collective climate action and food security unless the collective agriculture sector takes more significant and detailed action. And so this is why I welcome the positive signal that this meeting and this communique uh, sends for COP26. Especially the leadership by agriculture ministers regarding the need to take climate action while providing the world's population with adequate and sustainably produced food. It's very reassuring that agriculture is approached comprehensively, including climate action on adaptation and mitigation, and also having at the center the importance of food security and sustainability. We also note the support for the Coronivia joint work on agriculture explicitly mentioned and look forward to working together on this matter towards COP26. I'm also pleased that Red Plus and the reduction of deforestation is included as a very important area in the community. What we have seen from ministers today is exactly the kind of progress and momentum we need to see in 2021 and as we look towards the incredibly important milestone event of COP26 in November. The agenda ahead is significant, but as this communique indicates, we are moving in the right direction. And I thank you all for your hard work. Over to you, Minister. Thank, thank, you. Dank. thank you very much. And now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Uh, Commissioner Wojcikowski. Sorry for technical problems. Thank you very much for giving me floor. First of all, I'd, I'd like to thank and to congratulate to German Agricultural Minister Julia Kleckner for organizing and hosting uh, this highly successful forum. Uh, it has been a pleasure to be part of this debate. Uh, I'm pleased to express my full support to the communique drafted by the Global Forum for Food and Agriculture. 
the text of the communique covers a broad range of, uh, of issues that are central in the European Union's international engagement. Uh, today we have uh, um, uh, we have made a commitment uh, to concrete action to safeguard global food security uh, in the face of the ongoing COVID pandemic. Uh, in that context, we have reaffirmed our commitment to the pressing matter of sustainability and sustainable development goals. Uh, we have recommitted ourselves to promoting healthy and sustainable diets, animal welfare, and uh, uh, con uh, confronting the causes and the effects of climate change with a particular emphasis uh, on the need for adaptation. Uh, innovation, development cooperation, and rules-based international trade are some of the important tools for uh, addressing the uh, these pressing challenges. We do so in uh, anticipation of the upcoming uh, United Nations Food System Summit. This has demonstrated that the ministers and representatives gathered here share most of our vision and objectives. Uh, and uh, our um, uh, affirmations today reflect the spirit of the Europeans' uh, key policy initiatives, such as the Green Deal and the Farm to Fork strategy. Uh, global and regional organizations are setting uh, ambitious uh, targets, uh, such as the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, to be achieved by 2030, and the European Green Deal objectives to become the first carbon neutral continent by 2050. These inspiring uh, aims simply cannot be achieved without the contribution of agriculture and uh, the equation. Uh, much important work remains to be done in the near future in a spirit of goodwill and cooperation. I'm therefore already looking forward the, uh, to attending the next global forum, hopefully live, uh, live in Berlin next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. We would now like to start with our rounds of um, questions and answers. Please state your name and uh, the um, organization you're working for. Mr. Kokoros, please. Having the opportunity to ask um, some questions here, which I will now do in German, um, which has a Konstantin Kokoros. My, my name is Konstantin Kokoros. I work for Top Agrar. One moment, there is an issue with my channel here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, All right, perfect. One question to Federal Minister Klöckner and Commissioner Wojciechowski. This morning, in one of the GFFA panels, the quite restrictive policy in Europe as regards new breeding techniques was criticized that also has an impact on developing countries. So they are not able to implement these policies. The director general showed that he is and demanded uh, quite uh, an openness to new technologies. And I just wanted to ask whether you um, can reciprocate that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Well, I would like to speak on behalf of the ministry and express my personal view. This is, of course, not news. Um, the Social Democrats, for example, are of a different opinion, for example. But if we want to change something and not simply describe uh, problems, we have to turn to new breeding techniques because we want to reduce the use of pesticides. We want to have resilient plants, plants that are resilient to pests and also to emerging pests due to climate change. We want to have resilient plants 
that are resilient to climate and weather events, we want to ensure that people don't go hungry and we want to be resource friendly. And if we take all into this into account, but simply state what the problem is and state, well, we reject new breeding techniques, this does not contribute to a solution. New breeding techniques such as CRISPR-Cas are not a silver bullet, of course, but rejecting them right from the start and rejecting research on these technologies and deliberating on how to make them accessible and available to those regions suffering from these extreme weather events. This is quite cynical, to be frank, especially in our situation, while we are quite com comfortable with our food situation. And this morning we talked about the continent of Africa. On average, all because of climate change, has a decrease in yields of, on average, 17 percent. So my opinion is it is not enough to simply talk about the problems. We have to think about how to be able to use different measures to help those people. Commissioner, you have the floor. Uh, Commissioner, you're still muted. We cannot hear you. Thank you for technical problems. Thank you for, for your question. And that's uh, the also there was problem during the, uh, your beginning of your uh, question, and I'm not sure that I, I understood uh, exactly, but the generally the um, in the common agricultural policy reform and the green architecture in this reform, we, we need to take into account the, from one side the, our environmental climate challenges and to make our agriculture more friendly for environment from, from one side. From other side, we also should take into account the food security. And this is the reason that we need to use uh, different tools, different instruments to, to, to in, in, in the process of reform of our agriculture. But the, the, in, in also taking into account the new uh, breeding technologies and uh, innovative te technologies like, like precision agriculture, for example. And from, from other side, that's, uh, mm, uh, I think that the uh, many positive results we will achieve, uh, uh, first of all, uh, reducing the distance from farm to fork. We also discussed during this forum how important issue is this. This it, it was also one of priorities for the for the German presidency, which uh, uh, was in the uh, was finished in the end of, of the year, and the, the lo uh, orientation to the to the local market uh, production for the local market, lo more connection between the farmers and the local food producers and local market. This is. Uh, the chance for uh, that our common agriculture policy will be uh, more friendly for the environment, for the climate, reducing, for example, transport costs, and uh, more e economically friendly for the farmers. This is, uh, I'm sure that this is the, the, the best way for the uh, for the strengthening of, 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 of our agriculture to, to make them more com competitive and uh, this is the, 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 the main instrument. But uh, we should take into account uh, all possible in, in instruments and uh, the, 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 the commission is open. And finally, we are expecting for the, for the uh, positive results for the environment, for the, for the uh, climate, for the animal welfare, which is also important, uh, uh, very important in our reform, and also for, for the farmers. Thank you. Thank you. If there are any further questions, please raise your hand virtually or use the chat function to signal to us that you want to ask a question. We'll wait for a couple of seconds. I currently don't see any other questions. So let me now 
thank everyone who has joined us for your interest in joining us for this press conference. We look forward to seeing you face to face next year again for the GFFA 2021 here in Berlin. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye bye. Innovation. <laughs> <laughs>